Uh, welcome to DevConf 2022. I'm a moderator for this session. Uh, my name is Andrei Veselov. Uh, me and Richard Filo are moderating this. Uh, this is uh, this session is uh, live, and there will be a time for your questions. Uh, use the Q and A section, please. And uh, from this moment, I'm uh, giving the word to presenter. And see you soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm David Duncan. I'm a principal partner solutions architect at Amazon. And my role as a partner solutions architect is to um, work with our open source platform partners. And I spend a lot of time working on uh, Red Hat in my day job and uh, then in my volunteer time. And, and whenever I have opportunity, um, I work on Fen CentOS and uh, Fedora projects. Uh, including the cloud SIGs. So we're going to talk a little bit about today about uh, Amazon Game Game Day and uh, and the event engine and how this how this all comes together to make uh, a gaming experience. And one of the things that uh, that you know is exciting to me is that um, Game Day was created um, in the context of um, the partner. The partner team for almost from the very beginning um, uh, we had a, a small group of of uh, partner solutions architects who were involved in um, actually they were just called solutions architects at that point um, uh, the uh, Obama for America um, ops team and uh, if you don't know that was that was run all on on top of uh, Amazon web services and was a a uh, super exciting experience. Um, but Amazon.com had um, what they called a game day, and game day was this um, this uh, operational stress um, testing that, and validations that they did for new hardware or uh, new system setups. And that continues today. That's a that's a part of our uh, part of the sort of the the culture of the Amazon experience is, is there, there is what they call a game day for pretty much anything that is new or um, has not yet been tested by customers where they just hammer it. Um, but we created a game day out of that. And uh, there were some really amazing people, Scott Ward and um, uh, David Rockamora are two, two of the people who originally worked on game day and um, uh, just amazing engineers who are who happen to be part of the partner solution team, um, and the way game day works is we break up into teams of four, um, and or break people up into teams of four. Uh, usually, there's there's a lot of people who are playing the game, um, and the the tenant is that there is no right answer. That absolutely there's no way for you to um, uh, to be wrong outside of just not having enough points to win the game. <clears throat> and it's a hands-on experience. Everybody gets to touch keyboard. You get to look at problems, try to solve issues. Some of them code, some of them just operational uh, and, and determine how you can do that. Um, and the, the goal is to build communities around the technology, right? Um, it's a really easy way to do that. Um, because this is uh, this is a time when you are put in these groups of ran usually randomly assigned, right? We try to try to break as as a rule. If you're if you're uh, the the goal of the game is to break up groups of people who really know what they're doing and put them with people who really don't, um, or or may, maybe don't have uh, you know have a a significant um, uh, you know, significant amount of experience around the platform. So then you'd have some people who are senior developers but have never touched Amazon, and then other people who are maybe junior developers but have a tremendous amount of experience, and then all you know, all ranges, right? So uh, every every functional ability and and role from business development managers to um, to product managers, to seasoned seasoned developers, seasoned DevOps um, groups or, or individuals, so it's flexible. 
And um, one of the things that I really love about this about game day is that you have this opportunity to build in um, whatever whatever can run on top of Amazon infrastructure, uh, which includes lots of partner solutions, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> that's a duplicate. So um, this is what a game day looks like. Uh, this is three people from the game day uh, advisors. They're walking around uh, making sure that everybody who has uh, questions gets their questions answered or if they're looking for hints and as to what they're, you know, whether or not they're on the right track. These are the guys who are sit standing around talking to them and this gentleman in the red shirt is uh, a a participant who is asking a question and these are a group this is a group of partner development uh, or partner solutions architects who are answering his questions now <clears throat> we've done this in the past uh, where we had um, we had some ansible modules and uh, those ansible modules fell out of or fell out of um, uh, support for the for the the program and this could and has been uh, Red Hat engineers but it could be CentOS engineers or it could be Fedora engineers who wanted to be to participate in in uh, building and supporting this type of environment and work and so here they all are working away in these big teams most of them probably not uh, have may not have ever seen each other before in their lives, right? And this is why I think this is an uh, this is something that I want uh, our community um, to participate in uh, the game day. Everyone who is part of this experience comes out of it feeling better than they did before, right? And they're upskilled on related te technology. So when we know that people who are having a great experience, getting a little trophy with a unicorn on top of it, and uh, by the way, these are probably just horse trophies where they taped or glued a toothpick to the front of the horse. That's typically how we do that. Um, <clears throat> uh, this, you know, look at the statistic. It says 92% of the people who do this want to do it again, right? And I think that's, that speaks for itself. And this is what, you know, a grassroots experience like this, uh, you know, gets you. You get a team of folks who uh, are super excited uh, about having just won a, a, um, a plastic trophy with a toothpick on the top on the head of a um, uh, of a of a horse and some stickers, and this thing can happen anywhere. This this happens to be in Austin. The one you know, the one before this that I was showing that that happened to be in Las Vegas. These are you know, this can this can be a a very large event. And people, when they talk about it, they say that it was the most amazing thing that they've ever experienced, right? They, you know, help me feel more comfortable using the console. Uh, I want to do this again, right, is one of the things I love. And the, frame, the framing device of stepping into a startup to clean up someone else's mess is an entertaining and realistic experience, right? So <clears throat> uh, the way it works is it takes about 30 days for us to set up the infrastructure environment, um, make sure that we have everything together, that there's no uh, conflicts with any of the other events. Um, and then um, and then the setup, the, basically the event is set up and then uh, once game time arrives, everybody gets to participate. But that's not why we're here. We're here because we want to know uh, how this thing works and uh, how we can participate. So <clears throat> the linchpin of everything is what we call the AWS Event Engine. And the AWS Event Engine is a, um, 
sort of a, a living code base in, um, in an Amazon account that provides the framework for all of the things that uh, go on uh, that, you know, that these uh, participants interact with. Um, it creates uh, an account structure for each one of the individual participants. So one of the, or not participants, but each one of the individual teams. So each team of each group has an isolated account structure that doesn't have anything to do with anyone else's accounts in the room, right? So we separated everything out. Um, and then uh, the, uh, the engine itself will um, create that kind of a, of a configuration in, in a way to support game day, or now we can support uh, workshops uh, with that, with that same functionality. So if, so if, uh, um, you know, a group wants to do an immersion, they end up using this uh, as a as a way to isolate um, infrastructure and make a sandbox. And then at the end of the day, they clean up the entire event engine. The event engine has a, the, the event, right, has a finite life. And when you close it down, all of the resources are destroyed. A little bit like deleting your account at the end of the day. Um, so stay tuned to this space where the, all of the workshops that are being created now, <clears throat> they are uh, they are being done in this uh, 2.0 uh, version. So uh, all of the things that I'm saying are probably going to evolve. I mean, for every system here, I was you know this is a there's a next generation and this is it. This is what it looks like. But this one provides uh, SourceForge support and uh, makes it possible for us to have publicly available accessible content for the whole the whole uh, AWS experience. And that's something I'm super excited about and why we're here today is that this will be uh, more publicly accessible. So an event engine creates for any event an AWS organization <clears throat> and an AWS. So uh, Amazon has a account structures for, for the, for web services. And in that account structure, there are single, there is a single account, a single account for a, for an event that is called the central account. The central account has access to all of the team accounts. Each one of the individual team accounts has resources. The central account through um, cross account access is able to um, manage and make modifications to the team resources. And that makes for some fun antics during the game. So uh, there are obviously there's development, but then uh, the the, from the perspective of the game itself, the operator is king, right? Somebody has to go in and set up an event and start start all of the work. So, an operator uh, in the, is a role um, where someone sets up a blueprint. They determine, you know, they look at what it is that they're um, uh, that they're planning to do with the teams. Um, there's some very specific information that's associated so that we know. Um, what kind of resource limitations to put on each each one of the accounts that's created. Um, and then <clears throat> the user um, gets a little dashboard of their own. And once this event is started, right, once the operator goes back and says, okay, I want to start this game, then the user, the the team gets a dashboard that they have access to that provides them with uh, console um, access, console access for their for their temporary account, and then uh, credentials for uh, logging into the instances that are pre-created, pre-installed um, in the system. So now uh, those users, those participants are participating in the event, right? So there are lots of different types of events. 
I've put down some suggestions here for the types of events that we might have in the in the future. And then I've uh, shown that this is this is made up of modules. So uh, I've also put down maybe some some modules that exist and some that maybe should exist. Um, so let's say we had created a module for the Open Data, Open Data Hub machine learning with a with a game, um, uh, with a you know with a with some sort of a a, a, a game angle to it, and we added that to a game day blueprint. The blueprint would then be made up of a group of these modules. Once that blueprint is created, the blueprint sort of aggregates all of these component parts together. And we can we can assign that blueprint to one or more events. So from the back end, we're we're able to take the modules, and the modules are really what what it is that we're focused on, just to let you know um, for the deep dive on code. Uh, and create the blueprint. The blueprint then can be used in its um, in its uh, uh, in whatever at whatever state it's in in a specific event. And you can have multiple blueprints that are associated with a single uh, event, meaning that if you've got specific versions of specific pieces that work well together, then you can maintain those together and you can maintain them. Uh, maintain their groups of uh, blueprints so that you can use them to create larger or smaller games. So uh, looking back at the the team and the components, when we create um, uh, when we create a um, a team, it's usually one person for a workshop. You know, the size is usually one per person for a workshop and four, four people, ideally, uh, for a game day. And a module <clears throat> has the ability to, uh, uh, well, a module provides a CloudFormation template. We call it the central template. And it's the central account that issues that and generates the, um, uh, generates a team's resources. A team has a an IAM policy, and that IAM, IAM policy is used to generate roles for res, for the actions that resources can take, um, and uh, and then um, those resources uh, and the functionality of those resources uh, contributes to your score. So a blueprint has so a blueprint for a module um, would have a readme file uh, for the operator instructions, a team role uh, for IAM policy, a pre-provisioned infrastructure, uh, which is the which is in the central template. And this is where I'd love for us to be able to create resources like OpenShift clusters or um, even rel configurations for different tools, um, possibly. Um, uh, you know, uh, control control hubs for for uh, uh, Ansible configurations could all be a part of that. Um, <clears throat> and it's where uh, we have interactive experiences like um, like creating outputs, inputs, uh, stuff like that. Then there are what we call checkpoints in scoring, and I'll go into this in detail uh, and support for remote events. So let's start by looking at the README. Um, Readmes are usually just markdown, um, super simple uh, configuration. So we create it, we give an overview of what goes on in the module, then we talk about exactly what happens um, in this, you know, in this in this lab. You know, we're going to be doing such and such a thing, and then we have um, more detail, and uh, then there's a quality checklist which kind of identifies exactly what's going to go on in the module and how how you will understand how you'll know that it's it's uh, fully functional. And then, <clears throat> um, and then there is uh, a you know um, there are 
guides guidelines for building and and developing these workshops so um the policy module is a really big deal this is kind of the first and um the first actionable thing right if you have any resources there has to be a policy that goes with them and this is um if you're looking at the policy this is an iam policy uh, or a module uh policy i'm sorry that's that's backwards on the on the diagram so the module iam policy in this case is one that's very relaxed for s3 uh, obviously this is a um a configuration that's pretty easy and you can set up, so the thing that makes this great and the thing that makes this easy to do from the outside, right, as, as, a, a, as, a, um, as someone who wants to participate in the game day experience, is that there are these variables um, that, are, that are used in our configurations so that if, we, um, if you have a, an, a module policy, the module policy doesn't, um, can be set up in one account and run in one account and there's a mock environment that we can use um, to get the experience of doing this as if it was the in the event engine but the but then we can replace a lot of these things in the in the um, in the cloud formation template uh, account information region information uh, region specifics <clears throat> um, role names etc um, with these var with these um, variables, and then those can be uh, those the the event engine itself can transform those those uh, uh, variables into the uh, content that they need to be. So if you have multiple modules, you have multiple multiple um, module policies, and those IAM policies are aggregated through the event engine. So we consume these um, um, these modules here into an event. That event is managed and, and deployed by the event engine. And the event engine takes all of these policies, combines them together to create one, you know, well, doesn't it doesn't technically combine them together, but it applies them and they all have uh, they all are associated with the team and the team's resources. And uh, basically that, that gives the access control that a team has inside of the account. And the same thing happens for building those resources. So the collected resources that are that are built are this the central using the central template. And this is a I showed the um, I showed the policy in JSON, but this is a this is a cloud formation template in YAML. When you look at the when you look at the configuration of the cloud formation template, it's setting this is setting up the parameters for um, for the uh, for the the variable uh, par parameters for the template, and the parameters for the template are filled with the variables that are um, that are part of the configuration of the game day. So a lot of that is determined by the by the engine. So the things that are set up in the event determine uh, the values of the event, uh, like the event ID. Um, the generated team IDs. You, you have to tell it how many teams you want to uh, you want to associate. Assets bucket for the for the event. So any any assets that are that are leveraged by the um, by a module, they would have to be available um, through the through the central account, and so there would usually be a central account pol or, or a policy to make that central account access work. But all of this again can be done in the context of a single uh, a single account structure. Um, and the, the goal here is to set up all of the, you know, to have the, um, to have all of the resources that are necessary for the game to work preset for at, at the time that the game starts. And that may, that way people can come in, we set, you know, we set the game up, they enter their, uh, their IDs <clears throat> and that, 
identifier gets them into the game and uh, off to the races with the um, uh, with the the resources that are built here. And those resources could be OpenShift cluster, they could be OKD, they could be uh, Fedora Cloud instances, they could be an entire uh, you know configuration, an entire solution. Um, uh, from whatever open source experience that we wanted to bring to it. And the interact, so so the, we don't just stop there. Each one of these modules has the, you know, we have the ability to create these kind of behind the scenes interactive um, moments inside of the game. Um, and that can be something as simple as determining a way to pre-populate an S3 bucket in a central account. So suddenly, during the game, an S3 bucket has different information than it had before. And if they're, you know, this can be used um, to kind of level set whether or not they're doing proper ingestion from the location or if there's a trigger or something like that. We can make all of those things, you know, make all of those things happen. And this could be, again, part of, you know, any any sort of centralized part or solution component of, of um, uh, anything we can do in Fedora and Fedora solutions, anything we can do with uh, CentOS as a base, anything we can do with Red Hat as a base, all those are are um, uh, are available and something that we can we could deliver and get an experience where people are learning to use it and getting comfortable uh, using it in this context uh, where they don't have anything to lose. And this interactivity makes it. Uh, a sort of a living experience. And that kind of comes, you know, follows directly into um, the next part of this, which is the score. Um, so scoring, you know, is really one of the biggest and most important things that you do. And the checkpoint, just to keep this conversation going around the checkpoints, we set those up and make sure that if things are going properly, and you know, if they, if if at this point we can determine that a that um, a, a one of the players or the team has set this up right, we can award some big points. Now that's a great way to go, but then points and and scoring can't just be a one-time thing, right? Can't just be suddenly it came out of the um, out of the air. Uh, scoring has to come from somewhere all the time. And this is kind of a blurry picture. I'm sorry, I even, I literally cropped this out of one of the pictures from earlier. But the, but the, what you're looking at there is a list of teams and their scores. And those scores are going up and down based on what they've done. And that scoring process is um, a, an iteration, it's a Lambda function that goes out and retrieves a list of all the teams and iterates through them and checks if the team has reached whatever checkpoint it is. Um, and uh, and then if, it, if the checkpoint's set, it will just, you know, dispense the, the points. And if the, uh, and the same thing happens for, um, for other sort of scoring models, right? So, we can have functions where if a, a system is uh, responding as it's supposed to, so let's say we had a, you know, we set up a microservice for a customer, you know, in the game, we're setting a microservice up for our customers. And uh, there's a way to have the other teams be your customers. So <clears throat> you have a system that is be a cust both a customer of all the other teams and uh, is a provider for all the other teams. There can be a scoring mechanism that is part of um, the successful, um, the successful uh, completion of a share or uh, or the failure of a share, um, and that's you know those kinds of of adaptive models for scoring are super super helpful and very easy to implement in, in the context of the game. Uh, so we have lots of scripts that can be just added in to make that scoring work. 
if if it's not clear what I'm saying, it's it, um, I'm I'm kind of alluding to the fact that you could create a simple service that would both uh, send and receive from other others of its type and provide a way of of um, of making that um, making that work and making it score. But then also we can add interactivity and adding that interactivity means setting up a service that will at some point in the life cycle make a change to the system that they are using, right? So we might break the, the security group rules and then they have an operational problem instead of having, instead of taking over, taking on um, the, the functionality of the microservice, the microservice is fine, but something, you know, we can deliver a different challenge um, over time that might cause them to lose points in a way that they did not expect. Okay, so now, I feel like we have a pretty good understanding of what it is that we're we're looking at. We've got um, we've got three three things that I think are really important. One is we have the central template. The central template creates the content or, or the uh, the resources, and the central template is run in the team account to generate that, to pre-populate what it is that the, that, um, that team members will, uh, will interact with. And that's done in a CloudFormation template along with a group of scripts. So uh, part, of the, part of what happens here is resources are established, an S3 bucket is created, that S3 bucket can then um, include things that happen on those on those resources that are that are created or serverless functions or configurations for for services and uh, that can function just the same way in inside of openshift as it can on some you know bespoke uh, um, pre-existing service So now I have uh, some gratuitous use of colored slides, and this is my call to action. I don't have, there are no Fedora, CentOS, or Red Hat OpenShift based game modules. And so I think that this is a, a deficit. This is a deficit. I really, I really think it's, it would be super fun to know that um, there were people out there in the world who were getting as, just as excited about um, the community experience as I am, and just as excited about being able to work with OpenShift and container-based technologies uh, that we've grown to love um, over these past few years as much as I do. There ought to be a SIG, and I think that that's really something that that uh, we don't have right now that we really should. Is I think we should be working on some really fun ways for our for our um, new users and old users alike to gain um, insight into the technology that they uh, are interested in, and especially the technology that we're building. And then just I wanted to end with a look at what kinds of things, what kinds of events and blueprints are being created um, and the and the uh, and the target uh, target groups that are there. And we can take these same kinds of paradigms and build our own um, our own event configurations and uh, and uh, find ways to um, to engage groups based on that. So we have these blueprints. Each one of these blueprints kind of fits to a, a group 
an audience and uh, and a duration. There's almost um, there's almost none of these experiences that go less than you know fewer than four hours. Um, <clears throat> uh, but this basically tells you a little bit about how uh, each one of these these game modules works and what it is that they're targeting for the for the users. Um, and you can see that everybody's getting a lot of introduction to very specific services in this case and very specific uh, content. And some of these are super simple, right? They can be as simple as just, I have a, um, uh, I have a website and on that website, if it's working correctly, it will reverse the word that I send to it. And some can be as challenging as trying to determine the um, the uh, a specific security vulnerability that is being exploited. This would be a fantastic um, uh, compliment to OpenSCAP. And this is probably the shortest one. I was looking at energy focus. And then <clears throat> I'll, I'll end here. Um, but this is some real world discussions. There's a series of, of YouTube videos out there to show some of the strategy. So that, uh, there's one where two uh, solutions architects are playing the game and they're actually going through, it's actually, it's actually a Twitch stream that's been captured. And, uh, um, and then there's another really good sort of breakdown of the financial services game day uh, that I think is amazing. And then the last link is just the link to the game day itself. Um, <clears throat> so um, thanks everyone for, for pay, you know, paying attention and being a part of this. I'm super excited about this. Um, and I will say we can take questions now. So Neil asks, uh, what do you think would be some good first modules? Um, I think some first, some really great first modules would just be building out uh, some functionality on top of um, of uh, simple components, right? And um, and maybe uh, having scaling issues, right? So finding a way to to set something up so that you need to respond faster than one, you know, faster than a, a constrained um, uh, pod can provide, and then have a customer, you know, have the the team have to figure out what the what to do. And effectively, any any basic best practice is going to be uh, where I would like to go um, with that. Um, And then <clears throat> let's see, a SIG for building conference games for these technologies and Fedora sounds like an interesting cross between Mindshare and technical governance. Um, I have, I have, and that's part of what I'm doing here, Neil, is I really think that I'm I'm kind of trying to gauge the, the interest and in, in generate a little bit more um, uh, community drive. But yeah, I think it should be more formal. Uh, Mark, uh, so how does the scoring work? Uh, so scoring works two ways. Uh, one is you can you can have a, a scoring uh, service touched by whatever it is that you're doing. So you can you know your your little application. Let's say you have an application that has a reverser in it, right? So I'm running a web a web application with a reverser. 
if the reverser doesn't work or if the web service doesn't respond, I can t I can say, okay, well, minus five points for I didn't get there, minus five points for it didn't reverse my word. <clears throat> or I can say plus five, I got there, and then plus five, it reversed my word. Um, and that works behind the scenes for us, that works with CloudWatch. And um, and we can uh, we can typically we typically have a um, uh, a communications agent through the event engine that will go back and filter through all of those um, those uh, scoring modules. <clears throat> and then the other one is the checkpoint, and the checkpoint is also hidden inside of the event engine. But it's basically you say you you identify a specific condition and usually that's a cloud watch metric or some sort of something that you can um you can uh, uh poll or whatever to determine that you you've got a success uh, a successful run and um and that can be uh <coughs> that can be done through an interactive uh experience too so a customer might be they might input a hash that was generated from a service that they that you know they that was broken and they had to fix. So it can be act it can be interactive from the with the team with one of the team members inserting it into an input uh, field on a on a web form, or it could be a, a reaper that just goes out and determines whether or not the functionality is correct. Um, and each one of those is considered to be what, what we call a checkpoint. And then, uh, then there's the interactive scoring. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah, the open S cap, I think is, is like, that's one of the, that's one of the ones that I feel like we have a really easy way of, of putting it together and having people understand best practices around it. One of the, uh, one of the um, scenarios that I could imagine almost immediately there is a customer who is getting a report that their um, extended update support service uh, version of Red Hat was out of compliance because they were using the wrong SCAP feed, right? <clears throat> or, you know, same thing, some, something similar. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could be of service there. All right. It's a, it's a great. It's uh, it's been it's been a fabulous uh, friend to me for a lot of a lot of time, fighting back people who don't understand the Red Hat and the pack the RPM packaging model for for handling um, security updates. Any other questions? And if there was a repository out there that you could participate in and, and a, a, a testing model, a testing framework that you could participate in that fit into the, um, to the model, do you think any of you might have interest? Yeah, yeah. I I think that that's a reasonable answer, Neil. <clears throat> I mean, it is it is a lot more. I think it would be more fun to. Uh, I think the fun comes in finding out that you've got something that is uh, super simple, and then putting a scoring model to it. Yeah, I think that uh, Mark the the having the scoring mo mo modules and being able to see that you're getting. 100 points or five points or whatever um, for the experience is probably great. And then um, I meant to run a game day uh, here, but um, we couldn't we couldn't uh, negotiate the the short amount of time um, from acceptance all to to um, uh, to to completion. But I would like to do that. I'm definitely going to try and get one set up for. Uh, I've already, in fact, got it established and ready. 
um, for Summit and also for uh, for um, for DevConf.us. And if it's accepted, then we I would love for us to all participate in this game. Um, but it, but I'm going to ask for a little bit of a commitment. I want to do two, I want to do at least two hours uh, in the workshop so that we can all get some big points and we can watch somebody walk away with a, with a nice unicorn trophy. <laughs> That's right, horse with a toothpick. Mark, I've had really positive experiences with the virtual game days. So you can still, uh, that's true. They were pre-COVID times. So the the way we do a remote, I didn't actually put this in the slides and I should have. The way we do a remote one is we have, um, we use the Amazon Chime uh, as the basis. And Amazon Chime has a has a web uh, client that works well with, um, with uh, Linux, but there is also a Pigeon plugin um, that was uh, was made by David Woodhouse that works for really well for just just basic um, basic connectivity. But teams have their own. They basically have a you know just a, a like a conference a conference call together and uh, they work through the problems. And that gives you chat and a lot of times chat is even better. What we found what we found over the years is that. The people who are um, that that participate don't necessarily come from the same place. So some people who speak, you know, if it's if the game the game's in English, some a lot of people have English as a second language. So the remote experience turns out to be better for the people who have an English as a second language experience because it's easier to part. You know, it's obviously easier. Uh, for, I think for all of us in our second language to to write than it is to to, to recognize the idioms of na native speakers, and and so uh, the the experience is really po super positive um, for uh, especially for people who might not have been as included in um, in a uh, um, an on site experience. So we found that that works out pretty well. Um, the people that I think have the best time are the people who just sit down and enjoy learning. And um, one of the biggest, uh, like one of the things that I thought was the biggest success in running a game day was seeing a group where about four of the tables had just abandoned the game, but they were all squirreled around one person who really understood what was going on and he was just basically giving lessons right and he was teaching everyone about uh you know access controls and uh security configurations and just going through each one of the things that he was doing and most of the people were had just stopped playing the game but they were having a blast just watch it you know just standing behind him another and, and then obviously an entirely different group when, you know, won the won the game day, but it was, uh, but I felt like, you know, the the experience that they had, where they spent so much time learning, was just as good, if not better, than winning. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Yeah, the teams are so we try to make the teams random. Mark, that doesn't always work out because uh, some people are adamant about um, you know sitting together, being a part, you know, being part of the same team, and there's no reason to stop that, right? I mean, this is not high stakes. We're not we're talking about you know people who are getting their names taped to a statue, right? We're not talking about you know if it was a it. it this would not make sense as a high stakes experience, right? This is a learning experience, a hands-on immersive educational experience, not a, not a tournament. Awesome.
yeah, thanks. Thanks for being here and thanks for participating. Thanks, Radek. And I can tell you right now that, you know, part of part of my world will will be making this happen. So I'm I'm super happy to be uh, a, a point of contact and um, someone to help you get through all of the all of the detail that's necessary for you to participate successfully. And I really appreciate everybody. I'll uh, I'll leave it there. I think we're at the top top of the uh, top of the talk. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you. Thanks to the speaker and thanks to the audience. It was a great presentation. Uh, it seems like we finished a bit sooner, and it's uh, good. So uh, the next session will be in. Uh, nine minutes and uh, I think see you soon on the next session.